Before we begin learning how to use the V5 panel modules, let's take a quick look at what's new. TK Actions V5 is entirely new. It was coded from scratch in order to include many new features. It's smaller, smarter, and faster than its predecessors and has greatly expanded capabilities. While the panel was primarily developed to take advantage of Photoshop Creative Cloud extension panel capabilities, there's also a version for Photoshop CS6. As I mentioned previously, several of the features in the Creative Cloud panel simply cannot be coded into the CS6 panels since the CS6 panel platform relies on older technology. As we go through the new features, I'll point out which features are not available in the CS6 panel. You've already seen the new modular design of the V5 panel. The sections and tabs of the V4 panel have become their own individual panels, now referred to as modules. You can open just the modules you actually use. It's a more compact and user-friendly design that allows you to arrange the modules to suit your preferred workspace. And the panel can continue to adapt as your needs change and skills improve. All V5 modules now have a help box at the bottom. Roll the mouse over any button to show a quick help message of what that button does. Clicking the help box at the bottom of each module opens a settings window. Multiple languages have been programmed into the V5 modules and can be changed here with the click of a button. Also in the setting windows you'll find a color fade feature that allows you to choose the preferred appearance of the colors in each module. While border color and colored backgrounds are used to visually group the buttons, too much color can be distracting for some users. Each module now has a slider that allows you to turn down the colors or turn them up. The V5 panel no longer uses the selection-based workflow of the V4 panel and its predecessors. You can still generate selections when needed with the selection buttons. However, selections are 8-bit by default, and the V5 works to avoid resorting to 8-bit states as much as possible. In order to do this, the V5 panel uses masks, which always match the bit depth of the image. 16-bit masks in 16-bit images, 8-bit masks in 8-bit images, and even 32-bit masks in 32-bit images. The V5 modules either show you the mask in real time, without needing to go into the view mode, or they can directly apply the luminosity mask to a layer mask. An intermediate selection is no longer necessary, and as a result, you see what the actual mask looks like instead of marching ants, which are often confusing. Luminosity Lock and Rapid Mask now form the core engine that drives several V5 modules. Together they provide a new method to create, adjust, and deploy luminosity masks. We'll take a closer look at how Luminosity Lock and Rapid Mask work in future chapters. For now I'll just point out that they still create the same 16-bit luminosity masks as always, they just do it much faster on even big, multi-layered images. The luminosity lock and rapid mass functionality opens up a full spectrum of mass for any channel including saturation vibrance, color range, and all component channels of the RGB and LAB color modes. For instance, there can now be a Darks 3 vibrance mask or Zone 6 cyan color range mask. Masks that previously would have been very hard to make and perhaps even hard to conceive are now possible with a couple of button clicks. Beyond the new range of masks possible with the V5 panel, rapid real-time mask modification is now possible. For example, any mask can be infinitized through a dedicated infinity button. There are also buttons that provide a one-click option to contract, expand, focus, blur, invert, and auto-adjust any mask. The pick button on the V5 panel is now smarter than ever. The V4 version would select among 23 preset zones derived only from the composite RGB channel. In the V5 panel, the pick button keeps track of the color channel used for the mask and picks a zone specific to that channel. For instance, with a mask generated from the blue channel, the pick button will use the blue channel value from the sampled pixels to create the specific zone mask. The V4 panel introduced 16-bit luminosity masks to ensure the best possible masks that match the bit depth of the image. The V5 takes this to the next level by having dedicated output buttons that automatically preserve the bit depth of the mask. 
You can still easily create selections of any mask if it suits your needs, but you can just as easily maintain a strictly 16-bit workflow when outputting masks as layer masks, channels, or pixel layers. The V5 Layer Mask module provides an entirely new way to auto-apply masks directly to the active layer on the Layers panel. This is the quickest way yet to use luminosity masks. All creation, adjustment, and deployment steps happen in the background, and the result is then automatically applied as a layer mask to the active layer. You simply look at the image and decide if the right mask has been applied. Auto apply makes it possible to quickly change to a different mask. or to modify the current mask to dial in the best way to reveal a luminosity mask based adjustment in any given circumstance. The layer mask module is also potentially useful in exposure blending because you can try out various blending masks quickly to find out which one works best. The History panel now tracks V5 actions as they're used. When clicking almost any V5 button, a brief description of what was done appears on the History panel, including the name of the specific mass that was created or used. This feature is particularly helpful in seeing which mass was chosen by the Pick button. Many more features in the V5 panel now work in LAB mode as well as RGB color mode. It should be noted, however, that the panel can only do what Photoshop allows. For example, Photoshop does not have a vibrance adjustment layer available in LAB color mode, so the vibrance button on the panel is inactive in LAB mode as well. In response to suggestions, the web sharpening section has been upgraded. Users can now choose an extra sharp option for highly detailed images and can also have the panel convert the sharpened image to the sRGB color profile. It's also now possible to automatically play one of your own actions once the image is sharpened in order to do things like adding a watermark to the web sized and sharpened image. There's also a new batch sharpening feature which allows all the functions in the web sharpening section to be applied to an entire folder of images at once. In addition to web sharpening, the V5 Actions module has several other changes. The Saturation Vibrance section was able to be removed because it now runs from the Rapid Mass module. This made room for a whole bunch of new actions. Vignette, Frequency Separation, Restored Orton, Add Color, Neutralize color cast and dust spot detection are all suggestions that were received and added. Due to popular demand, a streamlined version of the triple play has also been added back to the V5 Actions module after being removed from the V4 panel due to space limitations. The control module now features new icon buttons. Icons allow a smaller footprint than word-based buttons, and they also provide great visual cues on what each button does. If you're not sure what an icon is, remember that you can hover over it to get an explanation in the help window at the bottom of the module. Switching to icons allowed several new control buttons to be added, including canvas size, Adobe Camera Raw filter, color blending mode, and multi-step undo and redo buttons. The view button remains for when you want to see what the mask of an active selection would look like. Instead of a red overlay, the actual grayscale mask is viewed. Additionally, a levels dialog opens at the same time to allow the option to customize the mask while viewing it. The active selection indicator introduced in the V4 panel is still present 
it reminds you that you have a selection loaded even when you have hidden the selection or when no pixels in a selection are more than 50% selected and no marching ants appear. The new selection indicator now has a smaller footprint and is located at the top of each module. Finally, the zone mask buttons have been improved. Whole zones are white and half zones are black, just like piano keys. The calculation method for zone masks has also been improved, making them more precise. So that's an amazing array of new features. Hats off to Tony for continuing to innovate, listen to feedback, and find ways to make his already indispensable actions even better once again. Now that you know what's new in the V5 panel, in the upcoming chapters we'll look at each module closely to learn what each button does and how to use it.